Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Claire Day, and I'm the Chief Program Officer with the Alzheimer's Association, Northern California, Northern Nevada chapter. And I am coming to you from Chicago, Illinois. It is day three of the Alzheimer's Association International Conference. And you can see we're here in the main area where the exhibitors uh, spend a lot of their time and participants get the opportunity to talk to leading scientists and, and exhibitors in the field of research. And we had a really exciting day today that focused a little bit on non-pharmacologic uh, interventions and, and, and looked at behaviors. And the first study that, I, uh, that I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, comes from a small study involving involving uh, nabilone, which is a synthetic uh, cannabinoid that may reduce agitation in people with moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease that are exhibiting or experiencing agitation. Now, it's really important when you hear ca uh, cannabinoid that we talk a little bit about marijuana. It's important to know this is a synthetic compound. This is not uh, marijuana to date. Um, there have been no clinical trials that have been uh, FDA approved and and uh, looked at to uh, evaluate whether or not marijuana has any sort of uh, positive uh, outcomes in helping to reduce uh, agitation in people living with Alzheimer's disease. But this uh, synthetic form did have some effects on reducing agitation, reducing caregiver stress, and overall behavioral symptoms improved for the person living with the disease. So it's important to remember this is a small study um, and it's it's definitely a, a, an area of opportunity for further research but um, exciting nonetheless because we know that the use of um, pharmacologic interventions for behaviors is really not advised. It causes an increase in falls, uh, potential risk of um, more confusion and behaviors and that sort of leads me to talk to another study that we looked at which was evaluating um, the C, what they call the um, the uh, the uh, the Z drugs, those uh, drugs that are used uh, for, like Ambien, that are used for hypnotic reasons. These are drugs that are um, have the potential of increasing a risk for falls. And so, what a researcher did is they were able to look at a database of um, about. 2,952 people that were taking these Z drugs and about 1,600 people that weren't. And they were able to look for patterns and really try to evaluate whether or not there were any negative or positive outcomes from the use or non-use of these drugs. And what they found was really around those people that were taking these Z drugs. These are the these hypnotic drugs that um, people that were on them had a 40% increased risk of falls, uh, or excuse me, of fractures, um, and 59 Nine percent did have an increase in hip fracture um, for the, from those who were not on the, the, the drug. So again, I think it's really important that when we look at some of these interventions around common behaviors with Alzheimer's disease, that we're looking at ways um, to improve uh, person-centered care and improve the quality of life for people living with, um, with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. And then the, the last study that I'm going to talk about today comes from um, a study that was done to really look at light. And when we think about light, you know, um, they, they looked at whether or not tailored light, a tailored light system could actually help to improve sleep, mood, and behavior for people with dementia living in a nursing home. If you think about light, um, light um, synchronizes our circadian rhythm. Um, our circadian rhythm is disrupted, uh, disrupts um, sleep, which can be um, a common cause um, a common behavior associated with people with dementia. And so in this study, they looked at participants um, and evaluated their sleep parameters and their depression and anxiety, and it really did show that they could improve outcomes in both short and long-term effects from, from this sort of a tailored light therapy. Um, this is going to be an ongoing study that really looks to see if we can improve uh, the sleep patterns of people living with the disease, um, can, we, can we improve some of those mood and behavior issues. And so it's been a really exciting day here uh, for, for some of these non-pharmacologic interventions. We're excited to see what tomorrow will bring. Um, and for that, we are going to be coming back to you tomorrow.